Hey guys, Mike here at the Detroit Borg with a quick review of the updated iPod Shuffle for 2012. Now the update here is very minor, consisting of new colors and finishes to bring the Shuffle in line with the new iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPod Nano. So instead of a glossy finish, we now get a sandblasted anodized finish. They also added a few new colors, including purple, yellow, and black, while pink is now more rose-colored and blue is more aqua-colored. We also have product red, green, and the silver version we're going to look at today. Now all the iPod shuffles come in two gig capacity only. That's uh, what you can pick up for $49. So there's one capacity, one price point. Now the shuffle design and packaging are unchanged. We still have that very nice crystal clamshell case which is easy to open. All you need to do is pull the tab to release the tape holding down the cover. Once that's off you can pop open the lid and reveal the shuffle which is fastened to a tray with a piece of tape. Now to release that all we have to do is pull the tab and the shuffle falls right off. Now before we explore the shuffle, let's check out the accessories. So inside the box we'll find all of our literature, including a quick start guide on how to use the controls and switches, and a warranty guide. And of course, we get a nano-sized Apple sticker, which is probably the smallest one you're going to find. Now below that we'll find the standard pair of earbuds, which do not contain the inline remote. Unfortunately, the iPod Shuffle did not receive the new earpods, uh, but you can pick those up uh, separately for $29. We also find our very short USB charging and syncing cable, which, as always, uses the headphone to charge and sync the Shuffle. Now onto the shuffle. We can see that the design here is unchanged. We still have the clip-on design in the back, which incidentally hides some of the FCC and model information right behind it. Now on the front, we'll find all of our standard media controls, including volume up, volume down, play, pause, and the shuttle controls. At the top, we'll find our headphone jack, LED indicator, voiceover button, and the three-position switch. The positions on the switch include off, play, in order, and shuffle, which will randomize the tracks. Now to charge and sync the shuffle, all we need to do is connect it to a USB port on a Mac or PC. A flashing amber light means the shuffle is charging, and once fully charged, it will glow a solid green. Now to add music, all we need to do is launch iTunes. Here, I can set up and name my shuffle. Once that's done, I can select the audio files I want to add, which includes music, podcasts, and audiobooks. You can also create and add playlists in iTunes and sync them to your shuffle so you can keep your tracks in order. Now once the music is loaded, we can connect our headphones and switch the shuffle to one of the positions, either randomize or in order. Playback will start automatically, and you can control everything on the front of the panel, including play, pause, skip, fast forward, reverse, etc. You can also use the remote on headsets to do all the same things, such as the remote on the newer earpods. Now since the shuffle does not have a display, Apple has also added a voiceover button. If you press the button once, it will tell you the name of the current song and artist. Tapping it twice will let you know your battery charging status. Battery 50%. Tapping and holding will recite your playlist menu, and to select one of the playlists, all you have to do is hit the play button when the playlist is mentioned. Now if we compare the old and new shuffle side by side, the differences are very subtle. So instead of a glossy finish, we have a matte sandblasted finish that kind of resembles earlier iPod shuffles and the rest of the newer Apple devices, such as the Touch, the Nano, and the new iPhone. The Apple logo is now silver on all colored models, or black on the silver model, as opposed to being the same color as the shuffle itself, as we saw in the previous model. But overall, there remains no design or feature changes with this update, so functionally, they're still the same devices. Now in the end, the Shuffle is still an impossibly small and lightweight clip-on MP3 player, and with the death of the clip-on Nano, I think there is more reason to consider the iPod Shuffle when choosing an MP3 player to take to your workouts. So that's going to do for me guys in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.